Famous Davis, um, and then Carol Monaghan. Um, we need to uh, be brief, I think. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Professor Woolhouse, I'm interested in uh, transmission settings in particular because I've seen a number of studies, whether through uh, test and trace data or through self-reported um, settings where people have been in the previous week where they think they've contracted COVID, which are somewhat conflicting. Um, Clearly, there's uh, strong evidence for indoor transmission. Um, we all know that. But when it comes to hospitality, there seems to be wildly uh, differing views. And also, non-essential retail gyms and travel, for instance, um, have all been banned in, in Wales. But the, um, the evidence doesn't seem to point in the direction for, for those being particularly relevant. So I wondered what your thought was as to uh, the, quality that, what, the quality of the evidence and, and where we stand with these factors? The evidence is as you've described it. Um, the problem is that a decision has to be made. Uh, another way of putting what John was just saying is that we do have to, at the current time, uh, reduce levels of transmission and we, we could discuss maybe another day about whether social distancing <laughs> lockdown type measures are actually the best way for doing that in a sustainable fashion, but we do. So something has got to give. Uh, we're, we're not reducing contacts through schools, which is uh, many people would agree with, um, and the hospitality industry has, has taken the brunt. I had a meeting with a representative of the Scottish hospitality industry the other day. She was hoping for some comfort, which I, I couldn't give her. Um, and she said what you said. She said, well, the evidence isn't crystal clear. Well, the, the evidence that we've all seen is suggestive that hospitality is making a significant contribution. But more to the point, it, it's almost a race to the bottom. The evidence is stronger for hospitality than it is for many other non-home settings. It's very strong for schools. Uh, sorry, big one. It's very strong for homes uh, and household transmission. But, but beyond homes, hospitality has better. So you've got to do something. And if it wasn't hospitality, it'd be something else. And the evidence for that would be a very similar quality to what we have for hospitality. So given that we have to do something, I, I think it's a reasonable decision by government mm -hmm. to go that route, though obviously I'm aware as everyone else is of the, of the difficulties that causes the industry. James? Fair enough, thank you. And um, one additional question in relation to potential immunity. Um, studies across the population of seroprevalence of antibody uh, levels. What's your latest understanding of what those show and in terms of T-cell mediated immunity, for instance, what role that might play? So in other words, what proportion of the population might have some protection at this point? Well, it, it's an excellent question and the theme, theme of this discussion has been that in the long run herd immunity is going to play a key role in how the dynamics of this plays out, um, as we've all made clear for a long time. Uh, I don't think it's yet possible to know uh, what the impact of T-cell immunity will be. Uh, what, what we're looking at the moment is antibodies and antibody responses decaying over time, which they do in response to any virus infection. So that's in itself not a surprise. It, it's what goes underneath that, whether it's T-cell responses or whatever in the longer term. Um, that's crucial. The, the, the big thing we're using the antibody testing for the moment is a, a marker for how many people have been exposed. Um, and obviously, the minimum number of people that's been exposed is the ones that test antibody positive. Um, but if it is decaying rapidly, then we may be underestimating to some extent the number of people exposed. Thank, Thank you. you. Could I just add a supplementary? Just very briefly, uh, Sarid, if you wouldn't mind. So just the simple numbers. Um, our most recent data show that 6.2% of the population of England are testing positive for antibodies. But there are regional variations ranging from 3.1% in the southwest to a high of 11.6% in uh, London. Thank you.